Buckle up! I'm going to cover a number of topics ranging from thermal compound performance to my experience repasting my i7 Mac Mini 2018 and lessons learned. I've put a lot of research into this video and it's going to be exciting. Let's go! Story time. I purchased my first Mac Mini in 2011. After about a year, the system was running hot, and after hearing success stories of repasting the processor, I decided to give this a try. I used Arctic Silver 5, and my results were better. The temperatures were about the same, but the fan was quieter. Today I have an i7 2018 Mac Mini that is also running hot, but quiet. Snazzy Labs released a video showing his i3 Mac Mini running around 90 Celsius after he replaced the original thermal compound with MX2. After seeing this, I decided that after my warranty expired, I would try replacing the thermal compound to see if I could achieve similar results. I decided to use MX4 because it was cost effective and advertised to last 8 years. I was thinking that this meant it'll likely outlast the useful lifespan of the Mac Mini, but fast forward three months, and I'll come to find out the MX4 almost completely failed. Why didn't the MX4 last? We have to understand what can happen to thermal compound. It seems that, to some extent, all thermal compounds are impacted by pushout and dryout, some more than others. Based on my observations, it seems that MX4 may be just fine for processors with an integrated heat spreader, like those found on desktop machines, but not fine for bare die applications. I use MX4 on my desktop, and so far it's been performing well. So how do I fix this? After hours of research, I've learned two things. One, thermal paste may act differently when applied to a heat spreader compared to a bare die. Two, thermal paste pump out or dry out is a real thing. Who knew? Which thermal paste is best for the Mac Mini or bare die applications like laptops? Some people say liquid metal is best, but even it may require regular maintenance, and there's a risk with using it. For example, it's conductive, and it can degrade certain metals like aluminum. So liquid metal is out. MX4 obviously has pump out issues, and similar issues have been reported with Cryonaut. Apple doesn't sell its thermal compound, and despite my experience in the past, I'm not sure if Arctic Silver 5 is going to hold up to today's technology. The solution seemed to boil down to two options, the IC Diamond Graphite Pad or the IC Diamond Thermal Compound. By the way, the 7 carat and the 24 carat are reviewed as separate products, but as far as I can tell, the only difference is in the quantity of product in the tube. Anyway, the Graphite Pad would be maintenance free and should perform similarly to Thermal Compound. The IC Diamond Thermal Compound is resistant to pump out and dry out issues, Granted, there are other compounds that make similar claims and may work just as well, but it was hard to find good evidence of these claims. Regarding the scratching issue with IC Diamond, I found a great article that basically explains what happens, and it boils down to the application method. If you drag the tube across the processor, you're likely to scratch it. Otherwise, it will only act as a polish. The solution? To keep a long story short, I had originally installed the graphite pad, but to my disappointment, the temperatures were horrible. I think it's because there's a slight gap between the processor and the heatsink. I immediately shut down and removed the pad, and I added the IC Diamond paste. Wow, what a difference! My Mac was acting like it was brand new again. Just to be sure this all isn't in my head, I ran some benchmarks. Take a look. Here we can see the fresh IC Diamond thermal paste allows the processor to consume more watts, which could mean more thermal headroom. Here we can see the CPU is running at full speed, so we know that we're not throttling. What I find most surprising is that my room is almost 10 degrees warmer, yet we don't see this translate into the temperatures for the IC Diamond. For those of you with an i7 Mac Mini, this table shows the turbo boost frequencies. Notice that with more active cores, the maximum boost frequencies are lower. After just three months, the MX4 lost so much effectiveness, it was almost 12 seconds longer to run the same benchmark. Here we can see the processor is using far less power, which means it's being thermally throttled. Here again we can see that the CPU is not reaching its maximum frequencies. Also, notice how well the stock thermal paste is doing at controlling temperatures. And again, I'm surprised at the temperatures. Even though my room is 10 degrees warmer, the CPU is running a little bit cooler. Check the description for links to all the information that I was able to review. 
In summary, Apple's thermal paste doesn't always seem to be that bad. If you do have a bad application or if it wears out, I believe IC Diamond is a viable alternative. Only time will tell, and I'll post an update so we can see how well the IC Diamond is holding up over time.